Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today I'm back at the dock and I'm doing the final touches on the Scorpion Jump Frog. Well, I'm at the point where I've made this blank and this is what I'm gonna make the mold with. And you can see I've done some refinements, some changes to the shape. I made the broad point a little further back and tapered the nose back down just to give it a little more refined uh, shape that's more aesthetics than anything else. But one of the things I neglected to do earlier is to do a really good test of where that hook eye should be. So I've drilled a few holes here, four, and I've got this hook eye that just screws in and screws out. And we're gonna try it in the water to see which place is the best. So stick around. So I guess it's the very top hole. So let's get back and make a mold. Well, I'm glad to be back inside, it's raining. And before I get to actually building my Lego frame and the clay bed that goes in it, we've got to do a little bit of planning. Like most things, uh, success means like 90% preparation. So we've got to plan out how to make this mold because this is not as simple as it looks. Uh, this lure has some moving parts, has internal hardware that's going to be a little difficult to put in, and I want to try to get as much in there as possible. So let's go to the dry erase board. So let's make some room. I don't need this drawing anymore. Okay, so I left that on there too long. So because this lure has this little slot in the bottom of it, it creates a little bit of a hassle for making this uh, mold because Typically what you want to do with a two-part mold is split the lure down the middle and you get half and half exactly. But this one I'm not going to be able to do that because I really need that entire slot fully molded in uh, silicone so I can use it to put my magnet on. If we cut through this lure straight through, it looks something like this. If this is the top, there's a slot. Of course, you know, there's an eye here and an eye here somewhere. But inside this lure, there, there'll be magnets on the inside, right up underneath where the hook will be. And that, that's just the hook and cross section. And I need to be able to have this fully molded so I can set that magnet right there. What I plan to do is mold this down this edge. So if this red is the mold wall, it'll be something like that, where this is aligned, obviously, straight up. So I'll have a shallow side of the mold and a deep side of the mold. If you look, if we draw it out like that. And that means that the sprue will be all on one side. So to make things easy, I'm gonna make that clay bed on this side. So this way I don't have to cut a big deep groove and I don't have to worry about filling this uh, gap with clay. If the lure looks somewhat like this and you have that channel in it where the hook comes out like this. So we've got an eye here, and there'll be an eye in here. Now because of the way I'm molding this, I won't be able to put this in beforehand. So I'm gonna have to put these two eyes, the tie eye and the hook eye, in after I cast it. When you're planning out your uh, clay bed, for this mold, you want to make sure that you get this lure arranged in a way that you can have the pouring sprue to the top. And the reason for that is that I need to have the most buoyant part of this lure on the top or up as high as possible on this lure. And that's true of almost any lure you ever make. You want to have the buoyant part at the top. Okay, that should do it. Now I, I reduced one dimension and I think that'll do it. That looks like I have uh, plenty of rubber around it and uh, a good spot for my sprue and not too much waste in the corner. So because uh, I'm going to be putting a magnet right at the top of the what's essentially going to be a pedestal of uh, silicon made by this little groove, I want to have something to it attach the magnet to. So I'm going to cut this little finishing nail small enough so it fits on this 
and then I'm going to glue it in, in place. And what will happen is this will become embedded in the silicon. When I'm done with the uh, silica mold and I pull this out, I can then reinsert this little piece of nail into the silicon mold and use that as sort of a, a way of attaching those magnets. Let me get the clay and we'll put some clay in here. So what I'm going to use uh, is this kid's modeling clay. It's the kind of stuff you can get at toy stores and at uh, craft stores. I think I bought like two pounds of it. Now, I don't need to put a real thick bed in because, uh, like I said before, I'm only going to go to this edge right here and I'll go ahead and uh, draw a line so you can see it's only going to have about a uh, maybe 3 8 inch embedment in the clay so I don't have to put a whole lot in there so I scrape a little from the high spots and put them in the low spots and I'll do this for a little while till I get a pretty nice smooth bed this does not have to be a work of art it doesn't have to be glass smooth or anything it just needs to be smooth enough so later on you can get all the contours of your lure uh, properly covered now I just need to arrange my blank uh, how I want it now it's I want it to be nose up because my sprue is going to be coming off this nose so that's going to be my highest spot I want to kind of center it I want about equal space front and back that's about right now I'm going to embed it in this and that'll give me the general space and location you can see where the eye is uh, and the, from there I'm just going to scoop out material you don't want to take out too much because then you got to fill back in next to the lure uh, you'll you'll see I just barely covering the line I drew and I'm going to go ahead and cut this back so now it's a matter of refining the connection between the clay and the body of the lure uh, and making sure these edges are nice and tight and nice and level or pretty close to level uh, all the way around the lure. I'm going to work on this a little more and we'll come back to it. So here it is and you can see there's a pretty good connection between the lure and the clay bed. And this is about as much work as I'm going to do on it. That's good enough. Now I'm going to put some uh, lock-in keys to lock in the two halves. So that means imprinting some sort of socket or dent in, in the clay itself. I like using this aluminum uh, little rod. It's got a nice rounded edge. So you want to have a perimeter that's locked in. So I usually start in the corners going at about, about a quarter of an inch or a little bit more. Here, my sprue is going to be right here, so I need to leave space for it. So I'm going to move over just a hair. Now, when you do a lure like this that isn't embedded all the way in, uh, putting a vent on it gets a little dicey because you really want the vent at the very peak. So I'll have to get a little creative and put a vent in later. I'm hoping that you can see that I put the sprue in right there. Uh, that's just made out of clay and then you can see I made a little vent and that little vent is just a piece of solder that I cut and then I drilled a tiny hole uh, in the plastic right here just so I can align that vent in the center and top part of that lip and that should give me a good vent when I go to pour the uh, lure itself and now I'm gonna see how high I've got to build this up so I've got these two little columns built up and I think that's about right and if you can see there I hope that's about 3 16 above the top of the body so the way I find the uh, silicone volume is by actual math now you can just use the rice method that works pretty good so I've measured the volume of my mold box and the only thing that I have to do now is subtract the volume of uh, the, the lure, the part of the lure that's sticking out of the clay. And I know that my lure is 26 milliliters. So when you multiply those dimensions out, you get 122.9 milliliters. And then I just subtract the 19.5, and that gives me 103 milliliters, roughly. So that's what I'll use for that first half. Now I'm using Smooth On. I like it. It's good quality stuff uh, and I was able to pick it up in a gallon uh, down in Orlando. I'm going to go with 100 milliliters and that's got about 100. 
All right, so it's a 10 to 1 mixing ratio for the hardener to the uh, silicone, and this stuff needs to be shaken. So I'm going to pour out 10 milliliters in this little graduated cup. That should be pretty easy to do. All right, I'm not sure if you can see the meniscus there, but that's right at 10 or just slightly above it. All right, and it's just time to mix. I'll take my time. I've got plenty of time to mix this. So remember, <laughs> you've got to scrape the stick along and along. You can't really leave the residues that are on this stick on there uh, as you go along. You've got to scrape the stick off. Now at this stage of the game, you don't have to add any kind of bond breaker. Uh, you don't have to put Vaseline or mold release or anything. The, the uh, silicone won't stick to anything that's already in there. But what silicone will stick to is silicone. So on the next half, we'll have to grease everything up real well. All right, so my technique to get a bubble-free uh, surface on my uh, lure mold is to pour a very thin coat on the lure just as an initial covering. And what that does is it forms a thin enough skin on top of that lure that uh, it won't hold bubbles. Uh, so those bubbles will sort of just naturally gas off. So let's go ahead and get this going here. I'm just gonna start the process of getting a little thin coat. And you can see how it's just beginning to coat and the bubbles are starting to come out. What I'll do now is I'll take the blow dryer and I'll give it a little blast of hot air. That'll get things moving a little more and into those crevices and get the rest of the bubbles out too. That looks pretty good to me. Uh, it's got a nice thin coat. And so now it's just a matter of filling this thing up. So that's pretty much zero waste. I'll just clean this up with a paper towel now. The pot life for this uh, material, this silicon, is about 40 minutes and it sets up uh, as hard as it's gonna get in about six hours. I like to make sure it's level to be certain I don't get a, a wedge shape mold. So you can see the uh, level of the silicone is just about perfect. So I'm pretty happy with my calculations. So it's just a matter of waiting for it to set. All right, it's the next day and we're ready to check the mold. And I think it's set. So what I really need to do now is to break off all the blocks around the clay and then pull the clay off. Go ahead and pull this off. Hopefully, we got a clean pour. Oh, that's pretty good. Sorry about the air conditioning sound, but it's hot. So you can tell it was a little warm because the clay is kind of stuck to the silicone. An easy trick to prevent this clay from sticking on your silicone when you uh, pull it off is to stick this whole thing in the refrigerator for a couple hours while the clay is still on there uh, and give it a little time to cool off and then usually it peels off in one big piece. So I'll clean it up and then we'll get ready to pour the second half. Okay, I've got it pretty clean. You can see the half the sprue right there. I'm just gonna build it out just a tiny bit. And there you go, that should do it. Now I'm gonna make sure that I spread Vaseline on all these surfaces. I don't need to put it on the lure body just on the silicone parts and making sure these little uh, finder keys get covered completely. Okay, well that's done and I turned the AC off for a moment. I've got everything well coated and it's ready to go. I just need to build up the sides. So before I get too far along building these sides up, I need to know how far I need to go. And right there is probably a bit much. So I'm gonna take off a half a block. Okay, it's built up. I got about 3 16th cover, and that's really all I need. Remember this drawing with the lure embedded in the clay bed? I no longer have three quarters of the lure sticking out. I have only a quarter of it sticking out, so that's gonna change. So a quarter of the lure sticking out is 6.5 milliliters. So the only thing that really changed is the uh, depth and let's calculate the volume. And it's 72.8 milliliters. And I need to subtract 6.5. So it's 66 
0.3 milliliters. We'll go ahead and pour probably 70 milliliters and pour this last portion. Typically I'll measure by volume with the silicone because I'm measuring such big quantities uh, that a small error doesn't uh, amount to much. I've teared it out, I've zeroed out the, the, um, the scale for this big cup and I'm just going to pour this in uh, and hopefully get 70 grams. And that should give me, there's 70 grams. 70 point Four five. Yeah, it's not too doggone bad. Well, it wouldn't be a video if the microphone didn't crap out. So here, what I'm saying is that I'm going to mix the part B by measuring it with this syringe. Now, I need 10%, so that's 7 milliliters. And I'm just checking it by eye. And now I'm introducing it to the silicone. And from here, it's just mixing. And then that same technique that I used by putting a very thin layer on the body and lure and there you go bubble free now it's just time to fill it up and just like last time I used all of it zero waste and now we just need to wait for it to set okay we're back the second half of this mold is set up real nice and I might have neglected to mention one important uh, item here most catalyzing agents need to be shaken. They usually separate in the bottle, especially if you haven't opened it and you haven't used it in a long time. Shake it well. Most of them will say shake well, and they mean it. So give it a good long shake before you use it. Otherwise, you're gonna be unhappy. All right, so all we gotta do now is open this thing up, and this is kind of the fun part. It's the reveal. Okay, so before I open it, I'll remind you about the little vent that I created with this uh, piece of solder. If you look at it right there, hopefully this thing will focus on it. But I'll pull it out before I pull the actual blank out of there. So now it's a matter of splitting this thing open. Vaseline did its job. Looks like it's working pretty good. And you can see the little connection right there uh, for the little leg hole. And that's okay. I'll just pop that off with my fingernail. And that leaves me a little stub. And that looks really good, actually. And the little stub right there will work out perfect. Here's the blank and the sprue chunk of clay. I'll just pull out and I have a nice sprue hole there that I can work with. I'll clean it up a little bit later. Uh, and now I'm going to go ahead and pull this wire out and it just slips right out and I should should leave me with a nice vent. Now since I molded across the wide part of this blank, that means I'm going to have to stretch this out a little bit to get it out. Not very much. But on some lures, if you do this, it makes a big difference in that you have to really stretch out your mold to get it out. And that really reduces the life of your mold. But on this one, I think we're pretty good. I'm going to just kind of detach the bottom and the edges and make sure I can get it out without too much fuss. And I'm sure it's stuck on the other side with the same kind of, you can see it over there that same leg hole has got a little bit of a silicone in it and that just gets detached a little bit and there we go that looks really good and you can see here the steel rod that i can just leave in there i thought it might come out with it but it'll just stay right there uh, magnets i can use a slightly larger one and just drop it right on it center it and i can just pour around it and it'll stay there. I don't have to worry about putting it in later. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim all this up, clean it up, and we'll pour the first one. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes. Let's go ahead and open this up. Looks pretty good. 
Uh, I poured so much that I covered up the vent, so I'm not sure how well the vent worked. We'll find out in a second, right? That looks really good. Let's take this sprue mushroom off. We'll just toss that. There it is. Pretty smooth. Pretty nice. It's going to need a little bit of sanding, just like anything coming out of a mold. And I've got a little bit of reveal on the uh, magnet, but I'm okay with that. That'll get covered with resin and paint. And that looks pretty familiar, right? This video is probably a little long, but I hope you got something out of it. I went through a lot of things, so if you've got questions, certainly ask. And if you're just having fun watching and you haven't subscribed, subscribe. This way you won't miss anything. Click on that bell and smash that like button, and I'll catch you on the next video.